In this video, we will be running through a demonstration of the extended version of the Leave Request application. Remember, the basic version set up a pretty simple approval style application that showed us how to create a data source using a K2 SmartBox Smart Object in K2 Designer, generate and customize two views and a form tied into that data source, and build a basic approval workflow that sends a Leave Request form to an employee's direct manager for approval. That was the basic version. Now for the workflow changes in the extended version. We've added two new email notifications in the workflow that get sent back to the leave request originator to let that person know if the request has been approved or rejected. We've also extended this application to allow for a manager or approver to send a leave request back to the workflow originator for a rework, which involved adding a new rework loop into the workflow we were also asked by our users to add an escalation to the manager approval user task, just in case a user's manager sits on the request for too long. This escalation is set to fire off with an email notification to the request originator and the manager within two days of the leave start date to let them know the task needs attention. Now onto our form changes. In most cases, when you have a rework loop or the possibility of rejecting a request of some type, you would typically need to require comments from the approver as to why they are sending the request back for rework or they're rejecting it completely. We've updated the form and our SmartBox Smart Object data source with an approver's comment memo style box to handle that requirement. In another interesting change to the form, we have also wired up the leave type dropdown list to pull its values from a new smart object tied to an Azure SQL database meant to allow for easier management of the leave types available for our users. Remember in the basic version of the application, the form did not have a very smooth interface after you submitted a leave request record into K2. It left you on the same page along with the values you entered into the fields and it didn't give you much indication that the form was submitted. We've cleaned up the post submission functionality of the form in this tutorial by clearing out the form's data fields after the submit button is clicked, and we'll get to see how that works in this demonstration. Let's move on and get started. We're going to work with Cody again in this demonstration, and we'll have her submit two more leave requests to demonstrate the changes to the workflow and the form. The first request will demonstrate the escalation we added to the manager approval task, the second request will be set up to have the need to be sent back to Cody from her manager for rework. Notice I'm logged into an instance of Cody's web browser here. For the first request, we can enter in leave request demo 3 as a continuation of where our basic application demonstration left off. Let's select the leave start date for this request using today's date. This will help us test the escalation we configured by firing off an email to the manager and originator accounts. If you recall, I mentioned that it has been set up to execute if it's within two days of the start date. Now I'll select an end date. Another thing we did with the approver comments field here, notice that within this state of the form, we cannot edit the approver comments field since we made it read only for the request originator if adding in a new request. This is because there's really no need for that person to put data in here. We can finish up this request by selecting any leave type which, as mentioned earlier, is pulling from a cloud-hosted SQL database table. And I'll just add a request or comment here. Let's submit that. And upon submittal, notice that the form clears out the data fields to prepare for entering another request, and the list view gets updated with the request we just entered in down here at the bottom. Let's add one more request called Leave Request Demo 4 before we move on and look at the email notifications. This time we can select the start date a little further out and then select the end date accordingly. I'll grab a leave type from the list and add some more comments. Then we can submit it. Good, and that's all I'll submit for the demo. At this point, we need to open an instance of the approving manager's Outlook client to look at the notifications that have come in for these two leave requests. Cody's manager in this case is John, so I'll flip over to an instance of his Outlook web client. Okay, notice we have a couple new task notification emails sitting here for John. I'll open up the message for leave request demo 4. 
Briefly, also notice the new customized message here. We have included content from the data source to help the user make a decision in the body of the message and the subject line. I actually want to action this request using K2 Smart Actions. Smart Actions allow you to simply reply to a task notification email with one of the actions in the first line of the message body. K2 will look for these email responses and read the action and move the workflow along accordingly. This capability comes into play if you have user tasks that do not always require the approver to open the form up for review. It's actually really helpful in mobile situations if the approver is out of the office and can't get to their computer. Let's reply to this one so we can test out the new rework loop we just added to the workflow. I'll add in the word rework for the first line of the email message body and then send the email back. Now remember, K2 is watching its own inbox for that message and it will eventually send it back to Cody here in a few seconds. We will go back and check Cody's inbox for that leave request, but first, let's take a moment here to confirm that there's an escalation email for the first leave request with today's date as the leave start date. That looks pretty good. Notice K2 embedded information in the subject line and the body of the message based on data from the Smart Object data source that we wire up in the customization of the message. It uses the display name of the workflow originator in the subject, and it also drops the start date into the body of the message. Now, let's switch over to Cody's Outlook client to look for that email that should be sitting there for her to rework that request. Okay, from her inbox, notice there is a task notification email stating she has a rework task to complete. This time, I'll click on the link called Click to Open Worklist Item so that we can open the form and edit the original request. In here, we can just change the start and end dates for this entry. And because I want to keep this going and send it back to the manager, we can select Resubmitted from the Action Options and submit the form back to John. Notice the confirmation dialog here. I'll click OK, and then we can flip back over to John's email client to see if the notification is there for him to look at this request again. Here we do see the task notification waiting for John. This time, I'll click the link for him to open the work list item so that we can access the form. For the manager approval task, we made the form open up the approver comments field for editing while in this state. Let's enter in some content into the approver comments field now to make sure it works. That's good to go, and this time I'm going to select rejected from the action options and submit the form. We can click OK for the confirmation dialog. And now let's go back over to Cody's Outlook instance. And here, notice the rejected email arrived, and inside the body of this message, there is content showing the approver comments for Cody to see. That will do it for this demonstration of the extended version of the Leave Request application. When you're ready to jump in and get started, you can move over to the design and build tutorial documentation and videos that accompany this exercise to walk through the updates.